Okay. Um, I was talking about the, uh, the syringes. This is actually the catheter tip that they, the tube that they give, and, um, I don't, there, there we go. This is how it is, and I believe in one video I used this. <clears throat> I don't actually know what this is for. I imagine because of the design, it's for flushing things, but, um, I don't, I don't want to know what it's for. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to know what it's for. I just know that this is what I was given to use. Let me take that off. And um, I found that this was really long and made using the syringe awkward. When I was in the hospital, one of the um, one of the Navy Joes, I don't know what to call them. In the Army, the enlisted soldiers are called Joes. And so I just call him Navy Joe. But I imagine it's like a hospital tech or something like that. Well, one of the kids that was responsible for taking care of me, there you go, kid, he's probably in his mid-twenties. He cut the oxygen, here it is. He took the oxygen tubing. You can see how it has the two tips. And this is 2.1 millimeters in the, uh, the tube. And, oh, seven feet, so it's seven feet long. He cut this, and he replaced this tube on my syringe with this one. And the end fits perfect. It also fits snug, so, like, um, it, I can get it off, whereas this one was really difficult to take on and off. And I like to take it off to clean it. Um, so... I, when I went back for my one-week follow-up, I asked for more of these, and they were all going, well, what is she talking about? So I, I brought this so I could show them. This is what that kid gave me. I want more like this, because this is a lot firmer, so you have more control. Now, when I went back for my first-week appointment, I didn't realize they were going to take all the elastics off and leave them off. I, I know it's different for everybody. In my case, they took them off, so I could clean, and when they looked at the way my bite was lining up, they didn't put them back on. I'm not 100% sure if that was something they decided before I even got there, or if when they saw me, they decided to only give me two. Um, the other syringes, this is the other type I'm talking about, and I went and got the package. It says Lorlock, I think. Lorlock syringe. This is a 20 milliliter syringe. This one. And the tubing on this. Now, when they gave me this, it came, the first ones I got came with tubes, so I didn't think anything of it. Um, but the end, was, I can't pull that off. There we go. The end looks like this. And this tubing matches this 2.1 millimeter tubing. So, I use the ends for the catheter tip syringes. I use the middle for pieces for this syringe. Now this one's for my recovery formula. I label my syringes. And this one's for my amino acid supplement. And they both have the same tube. But yeah, so I always I got extra syringes because I changed them out and I used them and I won't um, because I'm hypersensitive especially to taste, I, uh, I wanted to make sure that when I was eating salty foods or foods with garlic or something in it or sweet foods, uh, or hot and cold, uh, that I wasn't getting any flavor contamination. That's why my water syringe is only used for water. Now, yes, I can't, ooh, I don't want to knock the camera over. Freaking Redskins. I'm a Patriots fan. Uh, and my husband's a Giants fan. But that's a story for another day. Um, I can drink from a cup. However, I have to take small sips with the cup. And if I put too much in my mouth, when I go to close my, my teeth to swallow, the water comes out. <laughs> Or whatever I have in my mouth comes out, and it ends up all over me, which is funny, 
but it's not great all the time. Uh, the timing has to be just right for that. It's really better with a crowd. I'm just joking. So I fill the syringe, and this holds a quarter of a cup at a time. And then I can just shoot in a little bit, but I know that instead of gulping down a quarter of a cup at a time and uh, worrying about it getting all over me, I just use this, and then I, I keep track that way. Um, what else was I saying? The new site, uh, the design is simple. Um, it's attractive. I mean, it's an attractive design. I really like it. But I'm keeping it real easy to navigate because I want it. I want it accessible, um, but I have information about the different types of surgeries, the different procedures, what you need to worry about, what you don't need to worry about. I also include why you don't need to worry about it. <laughs> um, there are some things like a lot of people I talk to are like, oh, well, I got this, 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 and this for uh, to prepare for surgery. There are a lot of people that are wasting money on things they don't need, and um, And I'm all for saving money. Um, my groceries, uh, well, we buy our groceries together. My husband eats a di different than I do right now. and But he still has, like, produce and stuff in with my groceries. But, I mean, maybe a little over $100 for every two weeks. And uh, for some people, that's a lot of money. For me, that's less than I usually have. <laughs> but I have consumed no meat. Um, so, other than using bouillon, like, uh, chicken or beef bouillon in some of my soups, I also use vegetable, um, I refuse to process meat, like, in a, in a blender. I won't do it. Um, if I can't chew it, then I don't eat it. And I did not eat anything during my recovery that I would not have eaten before I had surgery. Uh, for example... I did not puree pasta because that is just gross. Um, I did puree bread, but what I did was I made croutons with this high fiber bread. And then I put the bread in a soup that I pureed, but I didn't use a lot of it. It was just to add fiber uh, and texture to the soup because fiber keeps your digestive tract from getting all messed up from the liquid diet. So people that have a lot of gastrointestinal distress, diarrhea, constipation, anything like that, there's a good chance that you're not consuming enough fiber, so all the liquid is just going into you and out of you. Or you're consuming too much dairy, and you're not, you're not consuming other things to handle it, and that's causing like constipation or changes or whatever. Um, I've had no, sh no stomach problems at all. And uh, what else? I won't, I won't eat things like SpaghettiOs. I won't do it. Um, I won't, uh, I won't puree meat. <laughs> I won't, uh, I had eggs in a salad, like a potato salad, but what I did was I mixed it all up and I grated the egg. So it was basically like mashed potatoes with egg in it. Um, but it was softer than mashed potatoes because I thinned it out. Um, but yeah, I, if I won't eat it beforehand, I won't eat it now. Um, I've had no, no instant soups. I've had a couple of canned soups, um, but I've generally, especially in the beginning, I tried to cut salt because when you're swollen and you consume a high amount of sodium, your body's going to want to hold on to water and fluids a lot stronger. So in the beginning, I iced my face for two days. Not constantly. And I did a massage like this. And when you do this, always back. You don't want to go towards your nose. You want to push it back because um, you don't want to push all the skin forward. And you certainly don't want, you, you want the circulation to get away from the middle of your face. Then from day two through day eight or ten, I would alternate ice packs and heat pads and still with the massage under my chin too, under here, along here, anywhere where I had swelling or numbness, I did that. Um, and then sometimes with my fingertips, but usually with my knuckles. And you don't, you're not like crushing, you're not smushing your face. It's just light. Just enough to stimulate the skin. 
And then uh, I drank a ton of water. I mean, we're talking like almost 180 ounces of water a day. Because I wanted to flush the fluids. And uh, it helped. I mean, within a week, most of my swelling was gone. By day 14, uh, all of my swelling, swelling was gone. I believe, like, sometimes it looks a little puffy. This is in here. But I think that that's just... Um, in the morning when I first wake up, and uh, after four weeks of sleeping on the recliner, I went back to my bed, uh, but I still sleep with my head somewhat elevated on pillows, and uh, and I, if I w find that I'm sleeping on my face a lot, then I will come right back to the recliner until I'm sure that my bones are healed strong enough, but I generally sleep... Um, I seem to be able to sleep on my side for the most part, but uh, yeah, so um, I will get back to work, and then I will, uh, and when I move, hopefully within the next week or two, I will have at least the beginning of the new site up. Uh, I will post a, a link to the site in the uh, info box, but it's going to be jaw, J-A-W, Recovery, R-E-C-O-V-E-R-Y, Playbook, P-L-A-Y-B-O-O-K dot com. And in the meantime, if you want to see my other videos and, and information and notes and some recipes and stuff like that, uh, pictures, you can check my blog, uh, which I'll also post in the thing, but it's sashamaggio.com, S-A-S-H-A. M-A-G-G-I-O dot com.